ask you to spill the beans a little bit. <laughs> no, no, no beans. In fact, uh, so basically, at the moment, uh, in the bilateral, like any other bilateral, the sidelines of multilateral or plurilateral meeting, largely it is uh, the review of the relationship. Right. So review of the relationship will be done. Some new directives to uh, all the stakeholders will be given, who will take it forward. Uh, when I was mentioning that, basically. Uh, uh, since the 5 trillion yen is an ambition level by both the leaders, so what I merely mentioned was that we may even go beyond 5 trillion yen okay. and, and that will be the silver lining or, or, or the sugar on the, on the pie. Okay, all right. My final question, sir, because the Quad Summit is, of course, uh, the crux of this uh, visit, which is why the four leaders will be in uh, Tokyo on the 24th of May. Um, we do know the broad outline of the Quad. We do know that this is going to be the second in-person meeting, uh, conference that all of the leaders will be attending. What could possibly be the big takeaway, sir, from this meeting of the four leaders? So Quad is a very positive agenda and is a very constructive agenda. So, therefore, Whatever ills our uh, Indo-Pacific region, whether it is in the way of stability, peace, prosperity, uh, falling international law, freedom of navigation, free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. So all these issues would be deliberated by the four leaders and I'm sure they will be able to give directions for the future where we should lead to. But the, the tagline, the, the, the bottom line is that the region needs to be stable, secured, prosperous, and according to the international. Quickly, uh, China's growing militaries, Ukraine to feature again these two topics? Uh, well, what the leaders will discuss, it will be extremely difficult for me to predict. Uh, they, they, they are leaders, they are global leaders. Uh, so I'll wait to hear the outcome after they have discussed all this. Okay, so you're going to stay very tight-lipped about that, but this is going to be an extremely crucial Quad Summit given that it is the second in-person conference that the four leaders of the Quad will be attending. Which Shweta Singh, Palomi Saha in Tokyo for India Today. With that, it's a wrap from me, Chaiti Narula, on this bulletin. For further news and updates, don't forget to log on to indiatoday.in or go ahead and download the app. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. are watching India Today.
On the show this week, we have one of the world's biggest inventors here at the Dyson campus in Malmesbury. I'm guessing you already know who that is. Success is there and there's nothing to learn from it. But every failure, you learn something from viscerally. And of course, we say bye-bye to the iconic iPod. All that and a lot more on this special episode of Tech Today. On Tech Today, we have a very special guest. I'm here at the Dyson campus in Malmesbury and we have with us the man himself. Sir James Dyson, what a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Well, thank you for coming such a long way to see us and it's great to see you. James, when we're talking about um, technology innovation, do you look at particular regions, say India, and perhaps design a product in a particular way? Because technology mm -hmm. solves problems, right? We look at it for solutions. You've asked a really interesting question. I mean, 22 years ago, mm -hmm. our market was substantially in Britain and one or two other places. But since then, we've, we've gone global. We've burst across the globe. And we now have, as I just said, a lot of engineers in, in, the, in, in Asia. Mm -hmm. And we've done that because the Asia is the fastest growing region. And it would be arrogant to think that I could sit here, and I don't sit here because I'm often in Singapore and, and Malaysia, um, to think that we could develop products for Asia from here. Uh, so we very much develop them for Asia first, often. Mm -hmm. And our first major market was Japan, and we started making our products a lot smaller uh, for Japan because Japan likes smaller things. And then we found the rest of the world likes smaller products as well. Mm -hmm. They want lighter, smaller products. Um, and now we're in India. Uh, India um, presents some different issues. And I'm sure in the future we'll be designing products with India in mind, as indeed China, Japan, and a lot of the other countries we operate in. So we are prepared to do a product just for one country. Mm -hmm. We've done that already for Japan. We, we did a, pro a very, very small um, cylinder vacuum cleaner for Japan, which we didn't really sell anywhere else. So yes, is it, basic answer to your question is we love doing that. And, and it's interesting because although sometimes we do it specifically for one country, we suddenly discover that other countries want it as well. So it's important to get all those cultural influences. You know, building on that answer, James, when we talk about India, you made a trip to India very recently, mm. and the call back home is to make in India or to manufacture in India. Is that on the cards for Dyson? I can't say yes, but uh, it's very much on the cards, as to you use your phraseology. Uh, we would love to do that. Uh, at the moment, we're um, selling only uh, through our own shops and other direct and other means. It's a really interesting and important market for us um, mm -hmm. for lots of reasons. I mean, pollution is one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been making um, home devices to, mm -hmm. to purify the house mm -hmm. for some time. And we've now launched a new product, which is really interesting. Right. Uh, which you put... Uh, you, you, you wear like this. Have you seen this one? And this is new. And you... You can put this on here. <laughs> There, like that. Right. And I'll just. Sorry, I can't. I, it's, so, it's so, so good, and I'm listening to music. I can't hear what you're saying, so I've had to take it <laughs> off. But what, what what it's doing in in here? There's there's um, two pumps and and filters. Right. And it takes in air, so it's playing music as well, right? Because it's headphones and very good audio as well. And then it through this device, it's it's pumping the air, purified air, and it it you breathe it through your mouth and nose mm -hmm. and it doesn't touch your face so the difference between it and a face mask is that this is gets all steamy absolutely and it smudges your lipstick and all that sort of thing whereas uh, this doesn't touch your face and actually it cools your face so actually it's very very pleasant to wear it particularly in a hot country uh, so that that's an example of um, how we react with a totally I mean no one's ever seen anything like this before yeah, absolutely. To, to solve a problem that um, you know, you're walking on streets or sitting on a train or on a subway or a bus, you're breathing in all those traffic fumes uh, and tyre dust and whatever, whatever's going on. And this is a way to have clean air and music and not be affected by your environment. So that, that's a, an example of a product that was very much developed with India in mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, and India's also interesting because it's, it's not a very sophisticated vacuum cleaner market. 
uh, as I think you would acknowledge. Um, and uh, dust in a home is a big issue. Uh, not only is it a difficult thing to get rid of and it goes everywhere, but it's also not very healthy, particularly mm -hmm. for people with um, respiratory problems. And then hair care and floor care, but particularly hair care is done really well in India. You know, you have wonderful hair and you want to style it and make it look mm -hmm. great. So that's done extremely well. A big part of being an inventor essentially is also being able to cope with failure because it's not like you get a bullseye on every shot. There are things that creators, inventors, creative people mm -hmm. try out and they don't necessarily work. How have you dealt with failure in the past? Well, as you pointed out, you, you can't make progress unless you experiment. And if you experiment and do something different, something new, you're almost bound to fail multiple times before you make a success of it. Um, so you, we just have to get used to the fact that our whole day is going to be full of failure, experiments and failure. But I find failure interesting. I find it actually much more interesting than success. Success is there and there's nothing to learn from it. But every failure, you learn something from viscerally. You feel it and remember it. Uh, so I, and I've always worried about education, actually, that um, we teach people to be successful first time, to give the right answer first time. And that's, that is important in quite a few things in life. But if you want to make progress and do something different, you've got to be prepared to fail and have multiple failures and bounce back from it and learn from it before you attain success. And the funny thing is that afterwards it looks like an act of brilliance, but it wasn't. It was an act of perseverance, <laughs> stamina and perseverance and a willing to ex willingness to accept failure. And I always say that um, you know, ours is a life of, or well, my life and those of my engineers here and around the world, is a life of dissatisfaction because we're not, not satisfied with anything we do. <laughs> we want to do better. We want to make it better. And actually, I think, curiously, that being dissatisfied is actually quite a happy life. You know, James, that's interesting, because in my head, the next question was all about contentment for creative people or for inventors. So mm. by your logic, not being content and continuing to hustle is a good thing. Well, I believe it is. And I'm, I'm backed up on this by research done by the University of Exeter who um, looked at various professions and looked at the levels of happiness in those professions. And you're not going to like this, but um, the, being in the media was one of the least happy professions. Medics were about in the middle, and engineers were right at the top. Mm -hmm. I've thought about that a lot, and, and you know, may, maybe it's this constant change, never being satisfied with what you're doing. You know, when you launch a product, you've got the next one waiting in the wings and the next one behind that. So you, you, you and this, I, must, I mean, what, what you've done is great, what you're launching is great, but you're dissatisfied and you've got a better one coming along, you know? So it's, I suppose, a, a life of, of there's hope because you believe you can do something better. And it's exciting because you, although you're launching one product, you've got the excitement of another one behind you. Um, so may, maybe that's why engineers are happy. Because mm -hmm. although they're permanently dissatisfied and not happy with what they've just done, um, there's always, they know there's more excitement along the way. James, you know, that sort of revelation makes me want to reconsider my career choice. <laughs> but, but, but that said, what you've done at Dyson is massive. And a lot of technology, well, industry people or, or big innovators in this space have done big things in the tech world, especially in the US, but they've done that by going public. Right. This is a company, Dyson, where you've consciously decided to keep it private. Uh, is that something that would change in the coming years? And also, I'd love to understand your rationale for doing so. No, we'll, we'll never go public. Um, and, and that's, in, in a way, that's being slightly unambitious in that, presumably, if we went public, we would get a lot of public money and we'll be able to do a lot more. We'd be able to perhaps have done our electric car, which I didn't dare do as a private company. But I prefer it as a private company where we own all the shares and all the decisions are our decisions. And by the way, they're all product-based decisions. Every decision about the company is about the next product or the products we're, we're making at the moment. There's no stock market decision. There's no outside investor decision putting pressure on us to do something or to increase our profits by 30% year after year or whatever it is. So any, any pressure comes from within. And I just think that's much healthier and a much happier position to be in. And so we are what you would call a family business. 
my son works in two offices across there. He's, he's running the business with me, designing the products with me. Um, and my other children are also interested in it and, and take part in it. And I hope it'll be a multi-generational family business, but that's not, I can only pass it on once, <laughs> which I hope to be able to do sometime, but um, I'm enjoying it enormously at the moment, so I don't see myself stopping now. But it's, I think, a terrific advantage to be a, a private business. Um, we can also take risks that perhaps the uh, CEO of a public business wouldn't be able to take. And we can take a long-term view. And we can also take um, a view about things like architecture. We can afford to build more expensive buildings, whereas a, a public company would have to build pragmatic buildings because, you know, they're, they're shareholders' money. But I can take the view that we can spend twice as much on a building because I want to build beautiful buildings that will last and which uh, inspire people who come to work in them. Fascinating, James. You mentioned the electric car, and that was something which was very close to your heart. In the future, do you think if you were to revisit that thought, maybe it would pan out differently and maybe we could see attempt number two? We spoke about failure and being resilient. Yes, I would never say no, um, but we, we've been developing new technology batteries and uh, for the car and for our other products. We make a lot of battery products. One of the reasons we didn't continue with the car was that we knew we had to put a huge investment into the battery because giga factories are very, very expensive things. So uh, I couldn't do both. Um, so maybe when we've developed the battery and got that into production, uh, then one could reconsider it. So it's because we, one of the reasons we want to do it, apart from the fact that we, we've been trying for ages to solve vehicle pollution problems and and these are you know this is one way of doing it but we we used to have a system that collected diesel exhaust pollution on on the car but no one in the industry would fit it uh, so we we gave up um, but coming back in the electric with electric car and with these was a way of of fulfilling our ambition um, but we make electric motors so we developed a very interesting electric motor for the car well there are two of them actually um, Air pollution and air heating and cooling is something we do, and uh, filtration is something we're keen on. So uh, the car seemed a very logical thing to do because that's what an electric car is. It's a battery, motors, and air, and air filtration, and heating and cooling, and that's, that's what we do. So it, it may well be something we come back to. James, what an absolute pleasure to have you on Tech Today, and this has been a fascinating chat, and I'm going to go on and explore the Dyson campus. Thanks again for joining us. Well, thank you for coming all the way to see us, and I'd love to see you soon in India. Well, I hope you're enjoying the show because this is only half the show. Picture abhi baki hai, and at the other end of the show, there's a special surprise for you as well. The team back home has been planning a bunch of things that are going to be in the second half of the show. And if you're liking it, then please do write into us on our social media handles. We're going to be back very soon after this short commercial break. Facial recognition is a biometric technology used to authenticate or identify an individual from a photograph or a facial image. The technique makes it possible to authenticate identity to check that an individual is who he or she claims to be. The image is compared to an existing image in a database. A person can also be identified in a group, place, image or database. From a still or from video, software generates an image based on the face's unique traits, the base of the ears, the distance between the two pupils, the shape of the nose, 
eyebrows and mouth and the even skin green. Hair and clothes are not taken into account. The next step is to compare the face print with images in the database. To reduce the margin of error, the quality of the image must be good. The face must be well lit, full face at a correct distance from the lens. Originally used to fight crime, facial recognition now has more mundane uses such as accessing bank accounts and social media platforms. But there are worries it could also present a threat to privacy and individual liberties. The technology also raises questions about the use of databases. You are watching India Today. The World Economic Forum is back after a two-year break. And the India Today group is on the ground to bring you all the ringside action. So join me and Rahul Kamal as we catch up with the biggest names from across the globe and India. Hear global leaders on issues that really matter from the 22nd to the 26th of May only on India Today and Business Today. Welcome back to Tech Today, guys. Now, I promised you there's a lot on this special episode from the UK. We're here at the campus and there's all sorts of tech on display. This, a Harrier jet, which actually takes off vertically, but I'm not doing an unboxing or a review of this. What I am saying is bye-bye to one of the most iconic pieces of technology of all time. Why have they done this? What am I talking about? Well, it's Apple saying bye-bye to the iPod. So all of us tech geeks on tech today, the team actually thought, well, we need to say bye-bye as well. This is how we do it. Ayush, this indeed is an end of an era. Apple is all set to bid adieu to the iPod 21 years later. Well, we all know that the Apple iPod indeed revolutionized the way we heard music, the way we shared music, the way we discovered it. Let's in fact walk you down memory lane. The Apple iPod was in fact released amid much fanfare by Steve Jobs and back then it could store about a thousand tracks. And just to put things into perspective, now the Apple Music has about 90 million songs consumed on your iPhones, on iPads, on iPods, on speakers, on MacBooks and even Android devices. You know, for consumers globally, the iPod was in fact an introduction to the brand Apple. The fact that it came in several pop colors, had this really sleek user interface, also that very fancy rotating dial, most importantly, gave great quality music, made this product an instant runway success for the tech giant. And in many ways, the Apple iPod is seen as a precursor to the Apple iPhone, another device that's literally changed our lives. In fact, right after its launch, the Apple iPhone positioned itself as a mobile device that could also double up as an iPod. And that, in many ways, led to the beginning of the end for the iPod. The writing on the wall was clear that the iPhone would eventually replace the iPod. Now, let's take you through some of the different versions of the Apple iPod. They had some really iconic releases, and it all started with the 2006 iPod Nano. Then in 2007 came the iPod Touch. And then that was followed up in 2015 when they released the fourth gen iPod Shuffle. And then it was finally updated in May 2019 with the seventh gen iPod Touch. Well now, when Apple gears up to bid adieu to its entire line of iPods, here's some information for you. You can still buy it until stocks last. Well, Apple discontinuing the iPod has certainly come as a huge disappointment to all those tech geeks and Apple fanboys. But the fact of the matter here is that Apple in India enjoys less than 6% of the smartphone market and is still looked at as an aspirational brand in the country. But what do millennials in India think about bidding adieu to the Apple iPod? Well, it certainly seems that my colleague Shivan seems quite emotional about this goodbye. Nabila, that's absolutely right. I think this iPod has too many memories of mine attached to it and I have this iPod touch in front of me. I used it all through my growing years and hearing that the iPod will no longer be there, even though I don't use it anymore, I'm still nostalgic and kind of emotional about it. But I want to know from others, does it really mean as much to the others or it's okay if it's discontinued? Let's find out. But like what was good or what was bad about it, like anything. At that time it was good. Uh, 
now it's like a bit of outdated kind of. Quite honestly, yeah. I like Android better than. There we go. <laughs> this is the point. I wish got it. I wish we got this first. <laughs> when was the last time that you used it? 2010, I guess. Apple has just started using the iPod, so I'm just trying to get a hint from people that what do they feel about it. सही मतलब लाइक अब तो काफी फ्री आने लगता है सामान ऑनलाइन एज ही सेड इट्स ओके सो दैट्स व्हाट इट इज थैंक यू सो मच आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट कि व्हाट डू यू फील अबाउट इट या आपने कभी यूज किया नहीं मैंने किसी और को यूज किया था पर्सनली अपना नहीं था पर मुझे अच्छा लगा ये फोन दिस इज व्हाट आई हैड ऑफ कोर्स इट वाज क्वाइट शॉकिंग व्हेन व्हेन आई रीड अबाउट द न्यूज़ दैट एप्पल इज डिसकंटिन्यूइंग इट्स सेल्स द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट फ्लैश टू माय माइंड टू माय माइंड वाज 2009 व्हेन आई वाज 14 इयर्स ओल्ड एंड माय पेरेंट्स गिफ्टेड मी द आईपॉड शफल फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड लाइक इफ यू यूज योर फोन्स कॉल्स काम मैसेजेस काम व्हाट्सएप एवरीथिंग कम्स एंड इट इंटरप्ट्स योर लिसनिंग एंड आई मीन आईपॉड एक्चुअली गिव दैट पर्सनलाइज्ड टच सो आई वुड मिस दैट आई मीन इफ दे कैन कंटिन्यू दे शुड बहुत साल पहले यूज किया हमने जब नया नया आया था बट डिस्कार्ड कब किया था कि बस अब इसकी जरूरत नहीं है जब हमारे हाथ में फोन आ गया उसके बाद हमने यूज किया बहुत स्टेटस सिंबल स्पेशली इन स्कूल किड्स बिकॉज़ व्हेन आई वाज इन स्कूल आई वाज 14 इयर्स ओल्ड एंड इट वाज काइंड ऑफ स्टेटस सिंबल इन द क्लासरूम वी हैड टू हाइड इट फ्रॉम आवर टीचर्स एज़ वेल सो दैट वी डोंट गेट कॉट अबाउट इट सो पीपल हैड अ लॉट टू से अबाउट द आईपॉड आई फील दैट पीपल समवेयर आर स्टिल काइंड ऑफ नॉस्टैल्जिक अबाउट इट आई वुड लाइक टू बिलीव सो बिकॉज़ वेदर इट वाज द आईपॉड टच और द आईपॉड शफल पीपल स्टिल रिमेंबर इट आई थिंक द आईपॉड हैज लेफ्ट अ मार्क ऑन अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल द आईफोन हैज गॉट अ लॉट ऑफ मिक्स्ड ओपिनियंस फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल बट द आईपॉड श्योरली विल बी मिस्ड आई डोंट नो वेदर आई एम चोकिंग अप बिकॉज़ ऑफ नॉस्टैल्जिया और इट्स द पोल्यूशन I think I'm going to hand over to Ayush now because I don't think he's going to be facing any pollution. Well, you've seen many an unboxing on Tech today, but this one is special. In fact, I'm doing this in reverse. I put it right down there. This is in from DC Comics. It's actually at the Dyson campus. This is the new Dyson Zone, and what this essentially is is a pair of headphones. You've seen all sorts of headphones on the show. That comes with a visor, but this isn't just an ordinary visor. What this does do is it purifies the air around you, and it's all packed in this nifty setup that actually snaps on magnetically. I'll tell you how it works. Essentially, you're looking at a pair of noise-canceling headphones, and they sound darn good at it as well. But when you actually look at this end of the headphones, they come with massive drivers, and this is what lies beneath this metal mesh. It's a filter. which on this side obviously has carbon fiber which purifies the air that's coming in there's a lot of geeky lingo that i could use but i'm just going to go with the basics so you get what i'm talking about this will purify the air that air will come in through this into the mesh and when you put it on you're essentially breathing clean air i think this filter can actually filter out maybe 99% of all the pollution around you and i think this would have well an interesting use case especially back home in india even here in london i think this is very useful it also comes with a really cool app and it comes in this case this box which has a usb c charger i know you're always asking about this i don't know about the power brick maybe you'll know in some time but yes i'm guessing you can use a standard usb c adapter that's all the consumer tech to it but i think in terms of a use case i've used this right now is demoing it the music sounds good it's purifying the air that you use The guys at Dyson clearly know how to use well air purifiers and all sorts of cleaning equipment. This is an interesting mix for them to get into the audio space and well come in with some sort of embellishment which makes it very useful. This is going to come on the show very soon. This is an exclusive first look here from the Mumsbury Dyson campus, but it's going to be on the show very soon first on Tech Today. So Until then, let me enjoy and let me actually role play and think I'm in a Batman movie. If you nearly adopted the dark or whatever that line is on reels nowadays, but I'm going to be with you very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye for now. I told you it's going to be an action packed show blink and you shall miss it. I hope you've enjoyed our London coverage and Tech Today saying Namaste to London has been something that you've actually liked and if you have then you must write into us on our social media handles of course we're going to be taking the show to all sorts of places talking about all cool things tech 5G of course all these gadgets that we've brought on the show as well and telling you what it's like to be on the road with all sorts of tech thank you so much for watching until next week adios Rhythm. All of this is being made possible by Snapdragon. Unleash your dreams. Unleash the best smartphone experiences with Snapdragon.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com or call 9999892171. You are watching India Today. Printed by Berger Easy Clean. No dog, no dhabba, only beautiful walls. is at a turning point from the war in Ukraine to the climate and food crisis. From the much wanted metaverse to unstable cryptocurrencies, get a ringside view to the ideas and challenges that are shaping the post-pandemic world. Catch me all through this week on India Today and Business Today as I bring you all the latest from a World Economic Forum that's being held this time in summer in Davos. Presented by Berger Easy.